So today we're going to be slabbing up this guy here, this silver maple log. If you didn't see me go pick this up, check out my urban logging video. I went out and I got this thing down in an alley locally here and I found it on Craigslist. I went through the whole process of the process I go through of finding these urban logs, going out and picking them up and all that stuff. So check that out if you haven't already. I got this thing back here, I got it off the trailer and then I spent a little time getting it positioned. And the positioning of this log was something that I kind of spent a lot of time kind of thinking about because there are two really interesting ways that this log could be sawn because there are a couple of crotches here. There's a big crotch which happens to be on the bottom side and then there's also a smaller one coming off this side. And I've chosen to saw with the smaller crotch here. It gives me a wider board and since the top here has all this kind of weird bark inclusion kind of thing going on, I think it's going to produce more interesting slabs. Now the downside to that is that since I have this, this wedge here from when they drop the tree, I also have this section over here that's been cut out. I think they use that for a bottle jack or something for knocking the tree over. The boards are going to have these like, they're going to have weird ends on them. They have angled ends, which isn't super ideal, but I think this is a good trade-off to get more interesting lumber out of this. If you were going for yield, you would definitely want to saw it in the other direction so you were sawing in this plane here so that every single board you took off of that log just got shorter or actually would get longer as you got down here and then it gets shorter again on that side but you still maintain the full width. Now this log is fairly, it's fairly sizable. This is the biggest thing I've had up here so far. Uh, on this end here we're right around maybe 46 inches uh, or 117 centimeters and then on the other side there at the crotch it's just over five feet. 150 centimeters or so. And the whole log isn't super long, it's about six and a half feet long, which is just over two meters. So as we normally do, let's take a walk around the log and take a look at some of the things that might be interesting once we get into the cuts. So looking down here, there looks to be a little bit of evidence of some curl through here. Not a whole lot, but there is a little bit of undulation here, which hopefully will produce some curl in the boards. Also got a burl forming here, so we should have some really interesting things as we get through this cut. There are some more burly looking things forming over on this side here. You can see all the little shoots coming off. So this is the early stages of a burl forming. So that'd be really interesting as we get through there. Got another small burl forming down there as well. You know, and there's a few of them throughout the whole log. And then standing on top of the log, there's a little burl over there too. But what I think is most interesting about this log is that we got a bit of a bark inclusion kind of thing going on here as the tree is trying to grow around itself all the way down here. So I think that could be pretty interesting. Now on this side of the log, there is some more evidence of curl as you look through here. You can see the undulation here in the woods. So it's got some curl there, we know that. And you can kind of see that curl translating into the bark here a little bit since there are some striations in the bark itself, but nothing too crazy. I think this thing's gonna produce some pretty interesting boards. The one thing, that I am not super happy about at this point is I don't know how stable this log is going to be. There isn't a whole lot of contact with the bed after I got it oriented correctly over here and I got it jacked up on this end to get it level, but we'll see as we cut. So again, I'll just be cutting, oh, I'll make my facing cut again to get most of the waste off the top side here. And then I'm going to cut as many slabs as I can until I max out the throat depth, leaving the slabs in place, which leaves weight on the bed keeping the log in place, so hopefully we'll move around throughout the cuts. So my friend Jay stopped out today. He was kind enough to offer to fly his drone around a little bit and get some aerial footage of the slabbing, and he's probably also gonna help me move some of these slabs if I get enough of them cut before he has to go today. Going down. Yep. So this one's got some uh, some burl kind of thing going on here. So it's got all of these kind of burls starting to form here, and there's a little bit of bird's eye through here as well. There's all these um, little burl inclusions in here, which I really really like. They're really cool. And of course, I don't know. We've seen it all already now. This is all curly, of course. No surprise, that's all curl through here. 
around this uh, bark inclusion here. This bark inclusion is kind of cool. Runs all the way down. Kind of gives you that river table kind of look, but a natural river table. Uh, another one of those um, little burl thingy mabobbers there. And you know, you got some curl. There's a little bit of staining up here. It's a little bit of blue stain. Could be some rot down below there somewhere. I gotta get my metric tape for all you metric weirdos. <laughs> Just kidding, I love you. This one here is 56 inches. It's 142 centimeters up here at the crotch. Boop. Yeah, like 26 inches, 66 centimeters, something like that. So a really cool little burl that's inside of the wood or inside the log. And there's some nice curl up in here. And then the bark inclusion is a really cool feature going up the middle of the slab. Not really sure how deep this thing goes. Looking down at the end of the log, it might keep going a little bit. I'm not really sure, but I think it's a really cool feature running right down the center of that slab. So I think I should be able to get one more, uh, at least, well, one more for sure, before I bottom out the throat. But I might be able to squeeze two more, but we'll see. Is it coming apart? It's good, I can actually move them then. There we go. There's a bunch of curl through here. It's the hard thing about felling maples. It's so white, you can't see anything. This is cool. There's like this kind of funky grain thing going on there. It's pretty sweet. And there's beginning of some crotch figure up there as well. Some more curl on that side. There's that uh, burl thing there. And this bark inclusion continues down a little bit, which is pretty cool. So the nice thing about that bark inclusion actually separating these slabs is it makes them a lot easier to move. So I can stack them over here on the base that I made for this whole log. And if you didn't see my video on setting up this base, I'll link to that down in the description and up in the cards.
Yeah, that'll do. Wow. Check out the crotch figure here. You got this really nice kind of starburst thing coming through here. Down through the crotch, flame through there, and there's all this curl on this side. A lot of nice curl all the way through here. Now on this side, it's even cooler. Let's see if I get the camera to see it. There's some really cool curl thing on this side. Some nice color tones in here with different shades of orange and red through here. Beautiful. So Jay had to go, but my other friend Brandon stopped by to give me a hand. Brandon does tree work here in the Minneapolis area, and we have a bit of a collaboration video coming up. Brandon took me out on a removal job where he was removing a walnut tree. We brought the log back here and slabbed it up, so look for that coming up in the future. Look at that crotch figure. That means the next one's going to look even better. We're just getting into it right now. Some bark, some bark inclusions there with the crotch figure. The color is just beautiful. One, two, three. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two, three. That's... There we go. There must have been like a plant or something growing in like the crotch area above there because it's all roots. Yeah, it happens. You got it? I could get it. Okay. Isn't that really awesome? Cool crotch. It's, crotch is bigger than your hand. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's a, it's a good crotch. <laughs> so a little bark inclusion there, which is pretty cool, but the crotch figure kind of just blends into all this curl through here. That is cool. Just a little bit of curl through there. By a little bit, I mean oh, a yeah. lot. Yep. <laughs> but this crotch is where it's at. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, there's some, uh, some figure going on in there. It's a lot of good character in a piece of wood. Man, that's cool. Wow. So much color variation. This is beautiful. Dark reds, pinks, browns. Next. Let's do another. It's got that cool gray color variation going on there towards the center. Yep. Like before we were like, oh look at all this curl. Now we're like, look at all this gray color. <laughs> That's some scale right there. People ask me why I mill big stuff, because it's so much more fun. Yeah. You don't get this much fun with little tiny logs. No way. Wanna give it a go? All right, here we go. Don't get stuck. So it looks like it's gonna be thunderstorming pretty soon, so we need to kind of move things along, and we're getting a little tired. <laughs> so we're gonna use the truck to move the slabs back to the stack, and that should also make it a little bit easier to get them stacked on top of the pile, since it is getting more difficult for us to get these slabs on top of the stack, the higher and higher the stack gets. Look how curly that is. Oh my gosh. Wow. That's some serious curl. Splash! Wow. Another nice one. Look at this. It's kind of a wavy thing going on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one's all you, Matt. Okay. Let's pretend you weren't here. <laughs> That's the Matt Cremona we go. know and love. That's what I would do if we weren't here. You have some really cool zigzaggy thing going on with the grain there. Two, three. It's 
got a lot of yeah, that's a lot of curl in there. Success! Slabbergasted! <laughs> well, there you go. One fairly large silver maple log, all slabbed up, stacked, and drying. And I am super happy with the way this log turned out because there's just so much figure in this thing, and it's just absolutely incredible. Now, I am actually still happy that I did saw the log in this direction here so that the slabs ended up being two separate pieces because this way I actually got more usable material. If I had slabbed it in the other direction, this crack in the middle isn't really straight at all, so that crack would have been winding through a few of the slabs, and you end up with a few slabs towards the middle of the log that would basically yield no usable material because they'd be split down their thickness, so that wouldn't be super great either. So this log yielded a total of 13 slabs. 12 of them were at 11 quarter or two and three quarter inches thick, and I had the last one at 12 quarter or three inches thick. So pretty incredible stuff. This was the widest cut ever made in one log on the mill. So that's a pretty cool milestone in itself. And thinking forward, the mill still has a good foot or so of cut capacity past this. So someday I hopefully we'll find something to get on there that is even bigger than this thing. <laughs> but that's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.